Good morning, everyone. Mr. Fifield here. I'm with you for devotion this morning. As some of you know, I was only recently uh, moved down to Tasmania from the mainland at the start of last year. And one of the things that I tried to do when I first arrived is you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to seem authentically Tasmanian, particularly when I got down here and had all these people who'd been here for a long time. Um, and so I could do all sorts of things to try and make myself seem authentic. I could call people cobber and I could uh, walk around at Kingston Town Centre in my Ugg boots, but there are lots of things that I, um, I couldn't do to seem authentic. And one of those was I would often get caught out with geography. And so I'd be talking to someone, having a good old yarn, and I'd ask, where are you from? And they'd go, oh, yeah, mate, out past Bridgewater. And so I'd just kind of look at them and I'd say, that's south? And obviously, that's not correct, and I'd be shown up each time. What that has to do with today is I want to take you into the Gospels a little bit. Something that's been an encouragement to me over a long time um, is the intersection between history and the Gospels. Um, as something that's propped up my faith as someone who didn't grow up as a, as a believer. Um, and one of the really interesting things about the Gospels is that when it comes to geography, they get it really right. And so if you want to have a look at this, there's a guy called Peter Williams who talks about that's one of the indicators that when the Gospel writers wrote what they did, they were trying to tell the truth. Because I know you've heard it. A lot of people talk about what are the Gospels? They were written later. Are they just accounts to kind of make Jesus seem great when they're not really anchored in truth, this kind of thing? But let me read you a little section. So this is just from Mark 7. Jesus has just done a very supernatural thing, I guess you'd say. He's just healed a girl from a demon possession, which kind of seems out of left field for us. Um, but then straight after that, the author Mark starts describing their route home. He says this, verse, verse 31, chapter 7. Then he, Jesus, returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee through the region of the Decapolis. Pretty innocuous, right? Seems kind of whatever. When you look at that on a map, that's not the way that you would think someone would go between those two points. Actually, it takes this big long route around. And so it would seem kind of unusual. But when you, when you know the details, there was actually a, a watering hole that went through that mountain region to get down uh, to Galilee. And so only someone who really knew the area would have thought to describe it that way. So it gives us this little indication that when Mark goes to write this story, he was either talking to someone who knew it, or he himself knew those details, was someone in the area, eyewitnesses, knew this story and knew this region well. So, so why is this an encouragement? Why is this a devotion? Um, for me, and I hope for you, it's one of those reassurances that when we go to read our Bibles today, this morning, uh, and we seek to listen to Jesus and see what he would speak into our lives today, it means that we don't just dismiss it as kind of just helpful, mystical, mythical teaching um, from some time, from some place in the past. This was a real guy, a real man in history, and the people who wrote these accounts were trying to tell us the truth. Um, and for me, as a historian, as a Christian, that makes a big difference. Um, that this is anchored in history, this is anchored in the truth, um, real times, real places, real people. Um, and so for us, as real people in real times and real places, um, that connection is encouraging, I think, for me. And so I hope that as you go to read your Bibles today, you're reminded of the truth, of the reality of what Jesus said and did, uh, and the salvation he holds out for us all in the life he lived and the, and the death he died and rose again. So have a great day. We'll see you soon.